This move is Magnus Carlsen's new secret weapon. He's used it three times in the recent title Tuesday to great effect. Ali Reza went a6, lost. Aparin went b6, lost. Nihal Sarin here goes pawn d5, the real acid test of the move, a proper opening response taking the centre. But will he go down to this opening, which I jokingly coined the plough, right? You're ploughing this one down the board early doors, or will he punish Magnus for this dubious move? So we see d4 from Magnus. This is the late title Tuesday, 7th of November. Now knight f6, e3, c5, and we quickly get a pawn structure here, which is the Tarash defense, but with this move inserted. So Magnus goes knight f3, Nihal the first to release the tension in the center, bishop takes, a6, preparing b5, and so Magnus stops that in its tracks. Bishop e7 developing. Both players castle. And now Magnus needs a plan. He wants to go queen e2, bring the rook to d1. Standard kind of ideas in this pawn structure. But then d4 falls. So he takes here first. And now Nihal doesn't rush to recapture. He goes queen c7, not allowing any queen trade. And bringing this cannon to the open file to blast that queen soon. Magnus is a little bit cramped. So he goes b3, preparing development. Now we see bishop takes on c5, bishop b2, and b6, Nihal playing copycat with the bishop. And now Magnus keeps moving forward here with knight g5. Not so much about attacking the king, but more about spinning into e4. And after h6, encouraging this move, Magnus centralizes, and this bishop just tucks back. It did its job, winning that pawn, was biting on granite there, so it supports this knight. We get rook c1, never a bad idea to x-ray the enemy queen. Bishop b7, queen e2, rook fd8, and now Magnus goes into liquidation mode. He's not loving his position, this random pawn out on a limb. So he takes here with check. Bishop recaptures, knight e4, more pieces getting hoovered off the board, or vacuumed off the board, right? Same difference. Queen e5, the queen's even come off, risky from Nihal, he's playing the end game goat, right? Be careful, knight g3, and now Nihal makes a small strategic mistake. This is a great knight, and this isn't actually such a good bishop. Magnus talks about the fact he'd rather it on this square where it can attack enemy pawns, it's not stuck babysitting his own pawns. But Nihal takes that one, rook recaptures, challenges the file, Magnus brings the second rook, these ones come off and Nihal invades. After check and rook d2, looks like he's got a great position winning that pawn, but Magnus plays a fantastic move. He's so good at blending tactics with strategy. So what does he do here? Not cover that pawn with king g1 or rook f4, but he plays the excellent pawn to e4 blunting this bishop to such an extent that if black takes, that bishop is toast because you attack it and where does it go? It's got no squares except this one, but then the rook comes here, check, you take the bishop next. So the pawn can't be touched, Nihal has to meekly return to that starting second rank and now Magnus, he's the one that can start pressing. How does he do it, right? Just turn these positions around. But a long way to go here. We get rook d6, covering that pawn. And now Magnus gets ambitious. He could go f3, just solidify this chain. But he pushes on with e5, opening this bishop, but now kicking the rook and making things a bit more complicated. Rook c6 played, and Magnus now goes wrong. He doesn't get it right. He is human. So what should he do here? Well, hot with the knight is one idea. Back to f4, slide the rook, but he goes a5. An ambitious move, but not a good move, because now b5 comes, and with this pressure gone, suddenly this rook can activate. The bishop can centralize. So Magnus goes rook d4. We get rook c2, hitting that pawn. King g1, bishop d5, look at that for a wooden shield, as Hikari would say. The pawn pushes on, and now Nihal had a great continuation here with check. The king goes this way, and rook e1. 
pressuring this, and if you go f4, well now look how drafty things are starting to get around the white king. This is not a good pawn structure. But coming back here, Nihal goes king f8, he just misses his moment. Because now Magnus gets f3, blunts this bishop, and now if you check, the king can run this way. It's subtle stuff. King e7 played, and now knight h5, from nowhere, Magnus generating this counterattack. Eyeing this pawn, also f4, where he pressures this bishop. And it's a moment where black should counterattack, not defend against the enemy threats. So rook e2 was best coming after this pawn. Again, if f4, well then you've got problems here. But Nihal goes g5. They're really low on time. We get takes, pawn recaptures. So Magnus can't take here. You've covered f4, but you just weakened f6. In pops the pony, attacking that bishop. We see bishop c6 back, but now rook d6. Look at this invasion, Magnus turning things around. We see rook c4 pressuring this pawn, but it's a pseudo threat because the rook has to stay with the bishop. So Magnus just improves that king. So important in the end game, and Nihal now makes a misstep. He plays pawn g4, not a good move. You know, he'd have been looking at ideas of this and opening the diagonal, even that's not good for black. But after knight takes, well, everything is still solid and you're simply a pawn ahead. Now the bishop centralizes one more, uh, once more, and you can hop with knight f6, but Magnus goes for this one. Still good for white, who's a pawn ahead. We see rook a7 check. The king steps back to stay with this pawn, and now here comes the knight on another crazy circuit. I mean, it's just all over the board. Knights are so tricky in blitz. We get bishop b2, sorry, rook b2 check. Now the king moves and pawn b4. This is Nihal's hope to run this one down. Magnus takes with check. And now I love the geometry of this rook because after the king sidesteps, rook f4, so that after b3, you can go rook b4. That piece has just snaked around the board. I love when rooks, bishops, queens, you know, they take a moment to reach the promised land, a destination square, but once it gets there, it's a beast, both attacking and defending. So rook a2 comes after the a-pawn. Now we see knight g4. Look at that knight doing so much damage. We see rook takes here, knight f6 check, king f7, and Magnus doesn't even rush to take. This is really classy. Let your opponent sweat, especially on seconds. He first goes king f4. More micro improvement, covering this pawn, and Nihal cracks under pressure and goes rook a3. I mean, all his options were tough. You know, running back a move, he should go king g6 apparently. But he moves this rook, Magnus chops here, pawn recaptures, king f5, and after king e7, check, king d8, we see the rook coming back, and not only is this pawn pressured, but so is this. What an amazing piece that rook is. So king c7 played, so as not to drop the pawn with check. Magnus takes anyway, and now you want to push this pawn, but then the rook comes back behind. So Nihal first goes king c6, stopping rook b5, but Magnus comes this way to try and head off the b-pawn like that. Rook a2, hits the g-pawn, Magnus pushes, we get rook f2 coming behind, Magnus again pushes, he's got the three on one, surely he's going to clinch this, but time is low. Now we get pawn b2, Nihal looking for tricks, and if you're enjoying this one, do hit that like button, really helps me out, consider subscribing to never miss a future video, and now e6 by Magnus, the pawn running down the board, rook d2, offering an exchange of rooks, rook e1, rook e2, trying to use the same trick, if you take, we make a queen, rook d1, rook d2, and the players here agreed to a draw by repetition, no, I'm joking, couldn't resist from yesterday's video, right? So we see rook b1 instead, Magnus not doing a repetition, we see king d6, king f6 played, rook e2, and after f5, Nihal resigned, because you can't stop these pawns running through. So Magnus takes down Nihal, Ali Reza, Aparin, all in the same tournament with the plow, pawn h4. I hope you enjoyed. Do check out the video on screen for another epic game of chess, and thanks very much for watching.